to a part two of Qigong warm-ups. Why don't you take this time to drink some water? Because water is good for you. And it will help you when you're moving. You'll have something to move. So why don't you take this time to drink a little bit? I know you're sippers, so go ahead and sip. So ideally you'd have done the upper body part or you've done the upper body part enough where you've done your own version of the upper body part. You know, focusing on each part enough, you know, acknowledging each part before moving down. Um, you don't have to do the whole exercise, all the exercises, because sometimes this overlaps. Um, and not everybody has an hour and a half to do warm-ups before they start Qigong. But, you know, anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour and a half is as much, you know, you should dedicate to movement in the morning. Um, especially if you're going to be sitting all day or, or, you know, you don't really have anything super active planned. Movement is medicine. All right, finish your drinks. And we left off with doing exercises at the waist in this area, the pelvic area. You can keep doing those pelvic circles. You can do those in the shower. Do those as much as you can. Um, especially if you're experiencing kidney stones or, uh, yeah, UTIs. That, that blood, clean blood needs to flow to those areas. And when it doesn't, infections happen, kidney stones happen, because it's accumulating, things are accumulating and not moving enough. And so moving that part of the body creates, uh, yeah, it gives the body a chance to bring in clean blood, clear out those like, things that have been accumulating. And I, I know people that have literally cured kidney stones um, and UTIs from just doing the kidney pump. That one they're doing, they're just pumping the kidney. Scrunch, kidney's compressed, kidney's de decompressed, and blood is allowed to flow. Blood flows out, blood flows in. Blood flows out, blood flows in. Same with the which is circular, crunchy one side at a time. It's just a constant pump. Um, but we're going to move away because that was the last video. And we're going to focus on the legs. So first, just to have some overlap, we're going to take our feet and we're going to spread them a little farther out from beyond hip, uh, hips distance. And then you're going to put your hands on your thighs and lean forward. And this is like you're gonna look around and see is somebody behind me. So you want to keep your hips straight and bend forward and turn your torso. And you're kind of the, the goal is to take your your shoulders and bring them so like your body's like a U. So here's the one. Here's like uh, here's one side. And you bring it around and then here would be the other side if I could bring the shoulder this way. So keeping your feet fat, flatly planted and bent forward. We're gonna turn this. This this arm's gonna naturally rise up. You're gonna feel a twist all up in your thighs and then your upper body. And we're gonna go back and forth. It's a really good digestion exercise. It's compressing all your organs inside your torso.
for one more side each. One more time each side. Shake it out. Next is our thighs. Let me bring this camera somewhere else. See my face anymore, but but oh well. Okay. I keep going back. There we go. So for our thigh workouts, for our hip workouts, actually, we're going to what's required is balance. And if you can't balance you need to do it smaller and slower. So you still have to do it. And, and you know, it's a, if you need something by you, if you're super about, keep something by you, but don't use it. Just have it there. Knowing that you'll have it there will help you with balance. Because half of this is balance. The side that's standing is going to be using balance muscles. And the side that's moving is going to be rotating and using the muscles that are around the hip. So, we're going to do this on all different planes of motion as well. So, to begin, we're going to start with our feet. You can't see it, but I'm going to take my foot. So, I'm going to be standing on my left foot first. So, I'm kind of going to shift my weight over. So, my left foot is supporting all my weight. So, I'm going to find a balance there. And then, again, I have something right here if I need to, but I'm not going to hold on to it unless I'm about to fall. And then I'm going to take my right foot, that's going to be doing the hip exercise, and I'm going to lift it off the ground slightly. This might be more than you can handle. Put your arms out, do what you need to do in order to get balance. Um, so slightly lifting, and this might be all you can do. This might be it, and then that's what you do, and that's it. Maybe if you feel more comfortable, you can rotate your hip in, or out and in. I'm, just, I'm doing that with my foot. You can't see it, but my foot's leading the way. And my rest of my, my leg is following. And that's all you can do. You start getting tired on this side. Put it for this side down. And then lean your weight over back onto this side. And do the same thing. And some people find it's easier to balance like this. Sometimes I find it easier to balance up, up, out like that, or like this, or like this, you know, whatever, whatever brings balance for you. So, this is the reduced version, if you can't do any more. And that's a workout, you know. Um, and just doing it is what's important. And you, eventually, if you do that enough, you'd be able to do, you know, the to like the, the highest extent of this exercise. So, I'm just checking the time. Okay, so for those of you who feel more comfortable or ready to proceed beyond that, you can go back to your, putting the weight on your left leg, lifting your right foot off the ground, and you're not putting it down. This is about balance and, and, and endurance and stability. So, you see, once you get it up, keep it up. And, and then you're going to internally rotate. So you're going to point your foot in, and your, foot, your whole leg's going to go in. In, up, out, down. In, up, out, down. And you're basically making circle with your with your hips in up out down in up out down do it at your own pace this is 
you know, some people can go more than I, I can go, you know, and you can raise their, their leg higher, put it out further, and then down, you know, but do it to your, to the level that you're at. This might be too much for you, so you might be going in, up, out, down, you're still doing it, you know, you might be able to take it to 90, and that's it, that's great, you're still, you know, I'm feeling cracks and pops in my hip, you know, our hip is close to our pelvis, it's all connected, move your body, so that's good on that side, your leg's probably tired, and that's what's great about this exercise, because when this leg stabilization gets tired, you're switching over to this leg stabilization, which are different muscles than you're working up by your hip, so then switch over, in, up, out, down, in, up, out, down, and if it's too fast for you, go slower, smaller and slower is the key to exercising when you are uncomfortable with doing it, however that looks. Um, that's also with injury, you know, if you're injured, doesn't mean you can, I mean, doesn't mean you stop exercising, it means you just do it smaller and slower. This means it's all you can do. You, know, you fell and you know broke your hip, and that's all you do. But until then, you you try to push yourself. You know, go back to the point of hurting yourself or endangering yourself with being hurt. In, up, out, down. So just tell yourself that over your head. In, up, out, down. In, up, out, down. Okay, you might feel a little bit of burning hips or other way other places so we just did that one direction we're gonna do the opposite direction the same location so we're gonna go out up in down out up in down out up in bringing my foot down I'm bringing it down to the ground I'm not touching the ground it's like right there down. Up, in, down. Okay. And you do it like five to seven times you know I kind of do it until this leg gets tired when this leg is like oh I don't want to stand anymore then I switch sides out up in and be careful in the beginning start slow because you you were just used to balancing on this side this, mu this these muscles aren't super engaged especially if you know you're not used to you know moving like this in, down out up in down out up in down and you're using your foot to guide the motion of the rest of your leg So now we're gonna get directional with it, um, which gets complicated. And so we'll go to the beginning, we'll go forward about 45 degrees, less if you have to. Then we'll start again. In, up, out, down. In, up, out, down. In, up, out, down. In, up, out, down. Okay. You can make it look really fluid now eventually, the exercise could look like that. Or you could do it more rigid if you like to keep it like that. Either way, you're making circles. You might notice I'm feeling fatigue earlier now, faster because of exercising those other muscles. Um, you might feel like you're losing your balance easier. Just always be conscious of your limits in your body. In, up, out, down. And so every time you switch, start slow, start smaller, get a little bit bigger as your muscles get used to that new movement.
and now we do it the other way. Five degrees out, up, in, down, out, up, in, down. both directions for that. I'm not sure if I did, I forgot. Um, then after you do the in, up, out, down, in, up, out, down, out, up, in, down, out, up, in, down, for, for both legs, we're gonna go to the side 45 degrees. And notice my body just naturally kind of comes out that's to counterbalance, and that's good. Just do what you need to do to be balanced. In, up, out, down. In, up, out, down. And if this is not something that you feel, you know, it's just like, then just bringing your foot out there and just twisting it. That's the, the low, the, the smallest version of this. And then do that for both sides. legs are probably getting tired at this point. Keep going, just to make anything smaller. You want to do it in all the different directions. So, now we have out, up, in, down, out, up, in, down, out, up, in, side, out, up, in, down, out, up, in, down. Okay. And last but not least, we've got the backwards direction. This is the hardest one. So if you need to, I'll pause the video, give yourself a break, go back to some pelvic circles to help stretch those muscles out that, you're, that are kind of sore right now. How about you I feel it like right in here, mostly. My leg is definitely weaker. Like I feel a little, little, ooh. You know, because we don't use our legs that much. Um, especially in this way. So, this one doesn't have to be 45 degrees, it's kind of extreme, but just definitely in the backward direction. In, up, out, down. In, up, out, down. In, up, out, down. In, up, out, down. Stretch. there. This one is the out, up, in, down, out, up, in, down, out, up, in, down, out, up, in, down, and the other 
side. Up, up, and down. Up, up, and down. Up, up, and down. Up, up, and down. Okay, shake that out. Congratulations. That was rough. So, for this part, we're just gonna, we just did a lot of movement, probably a little out of breath, probably a little fatigued, your muscles probably feel a little weird. So just why don't you just bend over slowly, just hang wherever it feels comfortable. You're gonna feel it all down the sides, in the back of your knees, you know, you can bend your knees a little bit, you know, but just get down there and hang. Maybe bob a little bit. Don't forget to breathe. Careful about blood pressure. And just hang. And then we're gonna come up slowly one vertebrae at a time. So we're basically like going to slowly rise up by our spine, straightening, starting from the lower back, straightening to the thoracic, to our neck. Our neck is the last thing that comes up. I'm gonna shake that out. I think at this point, that's a good time to do some, actually, what we do, we rub till it's red and then we hit. So rub your inguinal groove, the groove right there, both sides around your, your the hip bones right here. You can rub under your belly button, Above your pubic bone, it's a good spot. Just rub it all to the sides. Remember, we're rubbing to produce heat. We're rubbing with friction, so we're using pressure. We're rubbing till it's warmer. We're increasing the temperature of the skin. We're bringing blood, encouraging blood flow in. I got my hands and my fists and I'm rubbing with my fists because it's harder to do it with your hands like that. But if you can do that with your hands, great, do that. So rub my butt, the sides of my butt, all, all the sections, the lateral aspect of the thigh, the anterior aspect of the thigh, Posterior aspect of the thigh, medial aspect of the thigh, and then we're gonna hit. And don't be afraid to, you know, start to slip soft. You know, it might be tender, but you can. You could really it feels good to to hit these parts on your hip bones and your inguinal groove. The muscles really tight. See how tight those muscles are. You know. This, the, the pressure you use here helps loosen them. You might feel when you go over your, in between your pubic bone, the top of your pubic bone and your belly button, you might feel a little, like, like oh, I forgot I got a pee sensation. That's your, that's your bladder. That's, you know, your urethra and everything that's connected to your bladder. It's, it's giving a chance, you know, it's, it's tonifying, it's tightening. Blood's moving to it, it's strengthening. And then I'm hitting right below my hip bone. Here's my hip bones, I'm hitting right below it. There's some muscles in there that are really tight. You know, and then going around the back, right by my sacrum, those muscles right there are super tight. I like to give them a lot of. It feels good to hit. It's like kind of tender, but also feels really good. 
So I just kind of give it that tension that it wants. Go a little bit lower. Give my, my whole butt right now. I'm gonna bring it around the side. That's pretty tender. I'm gonna hit the top. If, you know, if your hands are too too much, you could, you could pat. But it depends what you're looking for. And then the back sides and the insides. And just keep that for time purposes. I'm cutting that short, but do it as long as you want. And then rest. Feeling what's there? Tingling, buzzing, soreness. Taking a breath, shaking it out, moving on to knees, lovely knees. So with knees, there's two different variations. One is we put our, we put our feet together. This is for people who have knee damage, knee problems, instability. This is a more stable version of this exercise. We're going to go out and up. We're just moving our knees. Our ankles are moving too. It's okay. So we're gonna grab our knees, we're gonna hold them. And we're gonna circle, we're gonna knee circles. Our knees only bend in a flexion and extension way. So there's really no other range of motion for the knee. But this helps the stabilization muscles, the ligaments on the sides. Even though it doesn't bend that way, it still does go that way. And this is, uh, that's where injuries occur. And so this exercise helps strengthen those muscles. So injuries don't occur. So for those of you who want a little bit more of this exercise or have the ability to do that, you can spread, spread your legs to shoulder width apart and same motion in it's a little bit more unstable the muscles in the knee have a little bit more work to do because they're spaced out <clears throat> okay and so this one we were doing this way but now go this way if you're doing that always do the opposite direction with everything you do and for these people that were doing this, now we're gonna go out. And you can do these forever. Yeah, there's no, there's no end in this. It's a really good exercise. We don't use our knees enough. They cold, that's what leads to injury. So this brings blood to them. This lubricates them. That water you drank, it's moved here. Drink more water. Okay. And when you're done, we're gonna rub our knees. We rub above them. We rub below them. On the sides. The insides. Behind. It's really powerful acupuncture points for lower back behind, underneath your knee in the middle you can rub your press down on that keep rubbing rub the tops rub it till it's warm and then we're going to take both hands we're going to clap it's kind of early here so I'm not going to do it loud but you want to really clap clap your knee your knee can handle it um, top and bottom front and back a little bit below, a little bit above. And I do that for both sides. Now we're done with knees, we have our ankles. 
this is the last joint that we do. So over ankles, you could do this sitting down. Um, I can show you sitting down. And if you're gonna be doing any of these exercises sitting down, you wanna be sitting at the edge of the seat you want your back to be straight, you want your butt to be out, and you want to be sitting on your butt. You want your legs to come out straight. You want your back to be straight. You want to be a nice 90 degrees, 90 degrees. So you want to be straight so when you extend your leg, it doesn't feel super weird. And that's basically what this exercise is about. So, extend, then plantar flex, and then dorsiflex. And you guys pretty much know the deal at this point and how this works. You do the basic directional movements, and then you add them all together. Now this is a, you know, sitting, like I feel a lot of, especially after all those, you know, uh, exercise we did for the hip, my thigh is, is on fire just doing this. So, you know, listen to your body, but push yourself, especially if you're sitting. So flexion, extension, if you're standing, it's the same thing. It's providing, you know, this leg, it's another opportunity to use its balancing muscles. So have something nearby, but don't use it. And so again, 45 degrees, out and up, out and up. It's actually less, requires less uh, work for the, the thigh muscle here, because you're not going as far out. Okay, and when you do that side, you switch sides. Invert and Ebert. In and out. Just change the angle so you can see. In and out. You don't really go out that much, but here's here's normal. Out. Out. In and out. In and out. In and out. In. It's not like a pointing, you're not doing any of that, you're literally going in and out. <clears throat> and so if you're seated, you're only really able to do it in that one direction. So we're going to continue doing these exercises, but then it, it turns into circles. In one direction. And try to make it very fluid and circular. And that means slow it down if you have to. Really draw that circle. Not from your points, not where your fingers, your toes are pointing, but like the circle of the joint itself. And then we go to normal switch sides. will help prevent injury. Say a dog's chasing you, you have to run. This will help you deal with that. So this is another go out. So all this all these can be done in this direction while seated. So if you're sitting there, you know, you're not doing anything, go for it. You don't have to do these in order. We do them in order when, we, when we're taking the time to do this, but throughout the day, you know, if you feel tight, if you feel sprain, if you feel, you know, you can do these, any of these exercises at any time. Okay. 
And so, just like the hips, if we did that in front of us, we're gonna do that to the side of us. And we'll do that again in every direction. Rotations, both ways, evert, uh, evert, invert, both legs, and also behind. This one's weird. This one is also the hardest again because it it increases the flexible ability of, of certain um, muscles. You're, you're increasing the, the stretch. Um, also, the knee stable, and also very strange doing the, the circles in this direction. So notice that. Notice that your brain might not have the same ab ability to do a circle like it did in the front direction. Um, so just do that on all sides, um, both legs, both directions, front, side, and back. And yeah, that's, that's it for as far as, as far as movement with the, with the knees and the ankles. And yeah, definitely rub the rest of your of your calf and your ankles. You can make it down that way. If you have to sit to do that, go ahead, perfect opportunity. You can even get further down that way and get a, do a better job. You know, give your body a break. But also, your feet. You wanna rub along the sides and the tops. A lot of points here and on the insides and then we're gonna hit yeah don't be afraid to the caps like your lower heart pumping blood helping pump blood up to your heart well, that's why a lot of times people get varicosities stagnant blood because it's not moving spider veins varicose veins um, stagnation in the calf either overuse or not use enough not used in the the way that is harmonious so yeah we're hitting this time we're hit don't be afraid to give this one a nice little beat and, and then you know, Tap on our ankles, give that nice little shock, and down the outsides of the feet and the insides. Um, yeah. Alright, good job. I'll make another video soon.